Sunday school that uh, wanted to talk about the deity of Christ. You know, we go up here on the square and we're on one corner. There's some people over on the other corner. They don't believe like we believe at all. You, they can, uh, you could say that, that they would say they're probably Christian. But you know, if you take Christ out of the Bible or you take Christ out of it, then I don't see how you're a Christian. Uh, it's just like Christmas. Well, we, don't, we call it Xmas or a happy holiday. No, I think Christmas is about Jesus being born. And of course, he was virgin born, and that separates him from all the rest of mankind. All of us, I mean, we weren't virgin born. But some teach, you know, that uh, Jesus uh, wasn't God, that he was a, a created person to come and, and they've got some funny ideas. But why is the deity of Jesus, is, why is that good news? You know, if Jesus wasn't God, then it was just a man dying on the cross for him. Well, we might as well just pick any man out, put him up on the cross. Will that work? No, sir. Well, why does, what's the difference in just anybody and Jesus? Well, Jesus was God. That's right. And he came down from heaven. The Father sent him down here. And of course, see, some don't believe that uh, in the Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Most of all your evangelicals, the Catholic Church even believes in the Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Don't they cross themselves? Uh -huh. Is it Father, Son, and Holy Spirit? Then when we baptize, we baptize in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Of course, there's some that uh, don't believe the way we do. Jesus said uh, in... Uh, did Jesus ever say it was God? Yeah. Well, I don't, now if you get the watchtower, or uh, there's another one that they've got, I forget what it is. Uh, anyway, they got their own literature, and they got their own Bible. They don't use your Bible. They'll refer to it. I think that's to try to pull people in to believe in the way they believe, but... Uh, but uh, Jesus did tell us that he was God. And there's plenty of plain scripture for it. And uh, uh, John chapter 10, verse 30 says, Jesus said, I and the Father are one. Well, he wasn't, and they'll just say, well, he was the Son of God, but he wasn't God. Uh, he was the first created being. No, he created everything. And there's scripture to show that too in the Bible. And really, when Jesus said, uh, he's talking to these Jewish religious leaders, and he says, I and the Father are one, uh, they took offense to that. They got pretty upset about it because they knew he was saying he was God. That's right. And uh, uh, this is, was offensive to his fellow Jews. Well, this group I'm talking about, uh, they say they're the, they witness for Jehovah. Well, I don't know about you. I used to tell people about Jesus. Amen. But he represents Jehovah. He's, he is God. And the Father is God and the Holy Spirit's God. So I said, well, the word Trinity is not in the Bible, but the concept of it's all through the Bible. Right. Starts back in Genesis 1, 26. Uh, chapter 1, verse 26, Genesis says, Let us make man in our... Amen. Is our more than one? Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, would that be more than one? Yes, sir. Well, that's about the first place it pops up. And uh, then when you baptize, you baptize in, in the three parts, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. But immediately, they, uh, when Jesus said, I am the Father, one, they start picking up stones. They're going to kill him. They didn't just want to hurt him. They wanted to kill him. Yeah. They thought he was committing blasphemy. If he hadn't been God, he would have been. He would have been committing blasphemy. And there have been people. I remember a guy named Koresh. He claimed to be God. Jones, wasn't it, down there in yep. Central America? Yep. And uh, there's been a lot of them. Father Divine. I, you know, I don't have a list of all of them. And, uh, but there, 
really, when the, the, those people come along, usually we, we figure there's something wrong with them mentally. And that the way it works. Yeah. <laughs> and, and really, either Jesus was God, or I got three other options here. He's a lunatic or a liar. Right. <laughs> it's facts. Yeah. Pathological liar. Or he's Lord of Lords and King of Kings. Now, which does the Bible say he is? If you go to Revelation, it says he's the Lord of Lords and King of Kings, and he's coming back one of these days, and he's going to set up a kingdom on this earth, and he's going to rule and reign, and if we're saved, we'll rule and reign with him Amen. during the millennium, and then we'll go on out into eternity. And I don't know, you know, uh, my Bible teaches that uh, Jesus is going to sit there on the right hand of the Father. I wonder if the Holy Spirit won't be on the left. Then. You know, I, I don't know how we'll see it. The Bible doesn't go into all that. But I'm going to see God. Uh, nobody's ever seen God except Jesus came down here and they saw Him. And he said, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. That's right. And somebody says, is that really in the Bible? But Jesus, uh, they were ready to stone Him. And Jesus' response to them was, have I shown you many good works from the Father? For which of them are you going to stone me? Did he heal people? Yeah. Did he give people their sight? Yes, sir. Did he raise people from the dead? Yep. Well, which one are they going to stone him for? Uh, I don't think just a man could do all that. That's right. Uh huh? Could he go up to Lazarus's tomb and say, "Lazarus, come forth," and Lazarus comes forth after he'd been dead four days? Right? Is that in the Bible? Is that John eleven? Somewhere in there. I know it's in there. It's in the Gospel of John. I know that much too. Uh, I wished I could remember everything about the Bible, but I can't. But I remember quite a bit. And the more I read it, the more I study it, the more I remember. Right? And that's the way it works. Faith cometh by hearing, hearing by the Word, Word of God. And, the, and their response is, it's not for a good work that we're going to stone you, but for blasphemy because you being a man made yourself God. Did they understand he was saying he was God? They understood it enough they wanted to kill him. They got pretty upset. In John chapter 10, verse 32 and 33, the sta uh, statement the Jews made was true. It was true what they said about him. He was God. And, uh, you know, and... The statement that the Jews made was true. Jesus was the one true God in human form. That's right. He was God come down, took on a human body. But even when he came down, took on a human body, he was still God. Some say, well, no, he emptied himself of his deity. No, I don't know how you'd empty yourself of your deity. Yes. But he took on a human body, and I think that deity went into the human body. Then he was a perfect God and perfect man. Somebody says, I can't understand that. I can't either. There's only ever been one of them. <laughs> and it's not any of us. Amen. Isn't that true? And uh, uh, I believe it was Jesus myself. But this was rejected by these Jewish religious leaders. They, they didn't believe he was God. Matter of fact, I think they kind of wanted to be God. They wanted to tell everybody what to do and not to do. I think sometimes the government wants to be God. But America wasn't built on that. That's right. America was built on the idea that all men are created equal and we were given our rights by God, not by the government. If you read our literature and the Constitution, the Bill of Rights, that's what you're going to come up with. And we got our rights from God, not from the United States government. Amen. They don't own our kids. Of course, I don't know. You, you can pay and pay and pay on your house and get it paid off. But if you don't pay the taxes, they'll take your house away from you. True. I knew people. I, I knew a fellow said it uh, worked with me at Coke years ago. I'm sure he's in heaven now, Charlie Wright. He's a black fellow. That, he's a good Christian man. One of the best I've run across. And I talked to him about anything about the Bible. He wasn't a preacher, he was just a Christian. But he read his Bible. And uh, he said 
they lived in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and they had all these steel mills and glass plants. And during the depression, they could walk around. There was grass growing up in the middle of the factories. They just closed down. And he said his mom and dad had their house paid for and lost it because they couldn't pay the taxes. And I'm going to tell you, the government keeps going the way it is. We're going to get there again. Yep. You can't just keep borrowing and borrowing and borrowing, and they're about to extend the credit limit again. Well, wouldn't it be nice if uh, any time you owed something, you just raised the credit? Well, someday you're going to have to pay. Yep. Can't do that forever. We've been doing it for a long, long time in this country. And, of course, I don't know. I, I like handouts. Uh, personally, I don't think Social Security is a handout, though I worked 40-some years to get it. Yeah. Over 40 years. And it, 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 if that's a handout, then the government lied to me. They were going to invest my money, make money, and be able to pay me back, you know. Well, maybe they should have let me invest it. They wouldn't let me to do that. Of course, I might not have done a very good job, but I don't think they have either. Now I'm, now I'm going to get off that. I don't want to keep meddling with that. But what does the Bible really say? Look, at, Go to Philippians chapter 2, verses 5 through 11. Philippians chapter 2, verses 5 through 11. Did God come down here and take on a human body, live in this world, sin, and never ever sinned one time. He was virgin born, so he didn't inherit a sin nature. Yeah. He lived a perfect life and died on the cross to pay for our sins. And I believe he was God in flesh. And let's read these verses. Philippians chapter 2. I go to verse 5. Let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus. Amen. Who being in the form of God thought it not a robbery to be equal with God. Now, is that pretty plain? Mm -hmm. He was equal with who? God. Because he was God. Yeah, but he was God that came down here and took on... Somebody says, well, how could he be God down here and God up there too? Well, it's a thing called omnipresence. Now, we can't be but in one place at a time. But God can be everywhere all the time. Some sense. And Jesus had all these attributes of God. Somebody says, well, he was tied down in the body. Well, whenever he wasn't in the body, before he came down, and now that he's gone back, he's everywhere all the time, and he knows everything, too. God knows everything. I don't know much. I keep asking God for wisdom. You ever ask God for wisdom? No. If you don't, you're foolish. That's right. That's Somebody says, I shouldn't call people a fool. Bible who being in the form of God thought it not Robert be equal with God verse 7 but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men did he take on a human body was it God come down here and then we're looking at Philippians chapter 2 verses 5 through 11 we're down to verse 8 and being found in fashion as a man he humbled himself and became obedient unto death even the death of the cross. Why did he come down here? So he could die on the cross to pay for your sins. And God did that for you. And if you don't believe Jesus was God, then you're less than the uh, power of God. Uh, go to John chapter 3, and he talks about if I be lifted up on the cross, I'll draw all money. Was he lifted up on a cross? Yes, he God. says Moses lifted a brass serpent up on the cross in the Old Testament. And if they looked at that brass serpent, they'd be healed once the snakes bit them. You know who the snake that bites you is? It's the devil. Right. And these groups have some funny ideas about who the devil is, too. And who Michael is and who Gabriel is. How many an angels are named in the Bible by name? There's only three. Michael, Gabriel, and Lucifer. And then if you go to Revelation, it sounds like two-thirds of them, Michael and Gabriel, were over two-thirds, and Lucifer was over another third. And when Satan fell, Lucifer, he took a third with him. They're what we call demons. <coughs> evil spirits. 
But anyway, I'm still reading. Am I down to verse 9 now? Is that where I got to? So I'm down to verse 9. Wherefore, God also hath highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name. Should we lift Jesus up on the cross and try to get people to look at him and trust him as their Savior? And if you don't have Jesus as a Savior, then you don't have any hope. Because he's the only one that could have come down here. Not some angel. Not some created being. Matter of fact, he created everything. He was, a, he was God. And then verse 10, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of things in heaven, things in earth, and things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Amen. Every tongue. You need to confess Jesus. Even <coughs> Then I want you to go to Colossians. Colossians. Chapter 1, we're going to go verses 14 to 20. Colossians chapter 1, verse 14. In whom we have redemption through His blood, even the forgiveness of sins, uh, who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature. Amen. Well, they jump on that and say, well, He was the first created being. You know, No, He was the one that created all the beings. He was the creator. Uh, for by him were all things created. Does that make that pretty plain? Yep. <laughs> uh, can, can you read English? Amen, thank God. Can you read the Bible? Don't read the watchtower. I forget what that other thing they got. They got another paper. You know, they make a lot of money off that stuff. They stand up here on the square and they got a rack. I want you to come and of course they'd like for you to pay for that stuff uh, I don't want to pay for that I'll be supporting what I think is not a true church but if they can get you to do that then a lot of people do for by him were all things created that are in heaven that are in earth visible and invisible whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers all things were created by him and for him I like the for him. Amen. And when he mentions principalities, powers, dominions, he <laughs> created all the angels. Amen. He wasn't an angel. No, he was God. Verse 18, and he is the head of the body, the church. If you're saved, you're a part of the body. So I says, well, I don't belong to a local church. Well, many got into that in Sunday school. You can belong to the body of Christ and not necessarily join the local church, but I think if you belong to the body, you ought to get into the local church because you're not going to be able to work through the body, That's right. the universal thing here. Your head told you. But you could work through Bible Baptist. Amen. Right? And if some people don't work through Bible Baptist, there won't be a Bible Baptist. Mm -hmm. Because Bible Baptist is not the Baptist, it's a church, it's the people. Amen. And no denomination runs us. Jesus is our head. He's the head of the body. Amen. And somebody says, well, I thought it was you, preacher. Uh, you own this property. I don't own this property. Right. You, God owns it through you. That's how it works. Of course, legally we got incorporated that way, so if the government or somebody would sue us, you they wouldn't take your house away from you. They would sue the corporation. But churches don't even have to do that. Then you're getting into legal stuff, and I'm not going to go into all that, but I've talked to lawyers, I've talked to CPAs about some of that. And he is the uh, head of the body, the church, who is the beginning of the firstborn from the dead. He was the first one to resurrect from the dead that never died again. There it is. It's defined right there. Now, I want you to think about this. He was the first one resurrected. Lazarus rose. Did he bring Lazarus out of the grave? Yes. But I think Lazarus had another funeral mm -hmm. later on. 
Now, what about Elijah and Enoch? Maybe. Well, I think they'll have a funeral. One day. You did go over in the book of Revelation, you read about it. They're laying dead, and people are watching them from all over the world, and they stand up. They had their funeral. People are celebrating because they're dead, because they were witnesses trying to get people saved during the tribulation. And they, they didn't want anybody trying to preach to them. Now, some of these cults will say, well, uh, they persecute us because we go out and try to spread the good news of the gospel. If they leave Jesus out of it and don't say he's God, then it's not the good news of the gospel. It's the bad news that you haven't understood the Bible right. Did you read these verses? Did they, did, did they read the same way in your Bible as they read mine? Huh? Then should that settle it? Is that God talking to you, telling you something? But they'll get their watchtower out. Or their good news for modern man. Their Bible that's uh, supposed to be scholarly, but it's not. But they like you to think it is. It says, Who is the being of the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he might have preeminence? What's preeminence mean? He's above everything. He's above all the angels. He created the angels. He's above the universe. That's right. Because he's God. But he did come down and take on a human body. How the Father stayed in heaven. See, I can't understand all about the Trinity, but it's taught in the Bible, so I believe it. Amen. Yet the word Trinity isn't in there. No, it is. Then verse 19. For it pleased. I get my next page here. I've got notes. <laughs> the Father that in Him should the fullness dwell. When Jesus was standing there, uh, I think uh, that was God standing there. That's right. Something else. Now, that wasn't the Pope. <laughs> now, the Pope sometimes says he can speak ex cathedra or something like that. Uh, he's speaking for God. Well, I never did see any books in the Bible the Pope wrote. Right. If he did show me which one, oh, it must be those apocryphal books. Well, most churches, other than the Catholic Church, they don't believe the apocryphal books. As a matter of fact, you go to study in some of that stuff. Jesus made pigeons and had them fly up when he was a little boy. Now, if you read your Bible through from page to page, you ever see anything like that? There's a lot of other craziness. He goes on, and uh, we're still reading here in the same passage. We're down to verse 20. And having made peace through the blood of his cross by him to reconcile all things unto himself, by, by him and I say, whether he be things in earth or things in heaven. Can he make you right with God, the Father? And of course, if you're right with him, I think you'd be right with God, the Father, and the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit's living in you. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, right? Mm -hmm. Now, I go to Colossians. If I were talking to some of these people, these are the verses I would give them. Just read. I, I'd rather read out of the Bible than out of some piece of paper that they gave me. Right. That's not the Bible. What do you base what you believe on? What? The, Bible. the Bible. That's our authority. It's not the Catholic Church, Baptist Church, Pentecostal, it's, it's the Bible. And so now we're looking at Colossians chapter 2, go down to verse 6. Colossians chapter 2 and verse 6. As ye have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk in Him. Did you receive Him? Well, how do you receive Him? By faith? Did you trust Jesus as your Savior? Do you believe He was God and He came down here and He died on the cross to pay for your sins? He was buried and he rose again and he went back to heaven. Are you looking for him to come back again? Well, some of these cults have said he already set dates for when he came back and he didn't show up. Oh, well, then he came spiritually. No, my Bible says in the first chapter of Acts, and they're watching him go up and it says he'll come back in like manner as he went up, physically, bodily, visibly. And that's in, I think, Acts chapter 1, about verse 10, 11, if you want to hunt it up. 
But we're reading Colossians now. Colossians 2, 6 through 9. As ye have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk in him, rooted and built up in him and established in faith, as ye have been taught, abounding therein with thanksgiving. Beware lest any man spoil uh, you through philosophy of vain deceit after the traditions of men. Well, if they believe something that I have needs to be, have some Bible to back it up, doesn't it? Just because I get up and say it doesn't make it so. But if I get it out of the Bible, does that give me a little authority? It's not, I don't have the authority. God does. He says, Be careful these traditions of men after the rudiments of the world and not after Christ. Now we want to tell you about Jesus and what He did and who He was. And how He's the Savior of the world. And uh, some of these groups, I think they think they're Jews. Because, you know, Old Testament, they kept talking about Jehovah, Jehovah, Jehovah. And uh, I, I believe Jehovah is really the Father, but I think He also represents all the rest of them too. Amen. For in the dwelling of all the fullness of the Godhead bodily, for in Him dwelled all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. What's the Godhead made up of? Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Is that what it says? I think that's verse 9, isn't it? Am I reading? i got a mark here. For in, for in Him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Who's the Him? I believe that's Jesus. Because isn't that who we've been reading about here? Jesus. Now in John 1.1 1, 1 it says in the beginning was the Word and the Word was God. Then you know what they say in their books? He was a God. That's not a good translation. It doesn't say I, a God in my Bible. Matter of fact, let's look at it. Look at John chapter 1. And really this is a real good passage. You know, one of the best places to go to know how to get saved, I think, is the Gospel of John. That's a pretty good place. Also, like uh, 1 John, you know, that little John back in the back part of the Bible. But John chapter 1. And I'm sure when I read this, in the beginning was the Word, that's capitalized Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Now we need to find out who the Word was. Go down to verse 14. Verse 14. And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. Who was it that was made flesh and dwelt among us? Jesus. You have to be a genius. You have to be Einstein to figure that out. No. So we read John chapter 1, verse 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God and the Word was God. Then in verse, read on down to 14, and it says, And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. Did He take on a human body or not? No. So I think that pretty well established who it's talking about. And we beheld His glory, the glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Who is the only begotten of the Father? Jesus, He's the only begotten Son. You know what? You might be a child of God, but you're adopted. I think it's Romans 8 if you want to go find out. It says we call him Abba. Abba Father. I'm an adopted child of God. Jesus was the only true Son of God. He was the only begotten. But I'm begotten in a sense, spiritually, but not physically. Well, in of course, I guess, really, if you want to get to talking physically, I guess you have to talk about the virgin birth. That's right. So they probably don't want to talk about that either. But in the best, just get you a Bible and go to reading. Huh? I still got a few more notes here I want to give you, and then I'll quit. I'm not doing too bad. Not doing too bad. Now we go to John chapter 20. John chapter 20, verse 27 to 29. It says, Then saith he, saith he to Thomas, 
reach hither thy finger and behold my hands and reach hither thy hand and thrust it into my side and be not faithless but believing and Thomas answered and said unto him my Lord and my God now somebody says well uh, how well, how did all that come about well after Jesus rose from the dead he appeared to the disciples and Thomas wasn't there you'll have to read earlier in the book and you'll find that in the Gospel of John you'll find it but then he shows up the second time. Well, the, when he showed up the first time, the disciples, the, his fellow disciples told him, says, well, you miss Jesus. It's not a good idea to miss church. Jesus might show up. That's right. Somebody says, oh, how's he show up? I think he shows up spiritually every time we come together. Amen. Where two or three are gathered in my name, there am I in the midst of them. I believe Jesus is here. I'm going to tell you something else sounds spooky. I believe there's devils here, or demons right now too. Uh huh? Yes. Well, I don't see them. Sometimes I think we feel them. Sometimes you feel closer to God, not as close to God. So I said, where do you get all that crazy stuff? I think I, I just read the Bible and God shows me things. But anyway, they told Thomas, says, well, you missed Jesus. He said, well, I'm not going to believe. He must have been from Missouri. That's the show me state. And he says, I'm not going to believe unless I can stick my fingers in the prints of his hands and the scar on his side. Now, Jesus shows up again. Matter of fact, if you read the account, he just appears in the room without the doors even opening. Yeah. Well, I, God can do that. I don't know what we'll be able to do when we get to heaven I know when I was a little kid I'll just tell you this we go down to southern Indiana you know it's pretty hilly in southern Indiana mm -hmm. and we'll be up on this hill and looking out there and see the next hill you know kids uh, always riding in the country are we there yet are we there yet are we there yet are they we there yet well I'd look out and I think man if I was not on the, this hilltop, I was on the next hilltop, would be that much closer. But just me thinking that didn't put me there. But in heaven it might, I don't know. That's right. We'll find out. But anyway, they told Thomas that, and Thomas said, I'm not going to believe unless I put my fingers in these scars. And uh, so then we read these two verses. Then saith he to Thomas, Reach hither thy finger, behold my hands, and reach hither thy hand, thrust it into my side and be not faithless but believing I said go ahead check me out i'm going to show you if you're from the show me state i'll show you verse 28 and thomas answered and said unto him my lord and my god did he call him god well you think maybe he knew for a fact that jesus rose from the dead yes sir because didn't they nail him on the cross did he have the scars? Matter of fact, when he comes back, he's going to have the scars. You go over to Zechariah and read that. Amen. It says, the Jews are going to see him say, what are those scars in your hands? He says, well, they were put there by my friends. <laughs> <laughs> the yeah. Jews. No, the Jews really didn't nail them in there. The Romans nailed the nails in, but the Jews pressured them into doing it. And we're all sinners, so he was up there on that cross paying for all of our sins. And then somebody says, well, who killed Jesus? And John, the gospel, says he laid down his life. He said, and if I lay down my life, I can take it again. And he did. Did he come out of the grave? Easter, I'm going to celebrate that, are you? <laughs> and if that's not true, then I have no hope. And if that's not true, I don't believe that I can believe he was God. But since I believe it is true, I believe I can believe he's God. Then Titus 2.13 looking, uh, looking for the blessed hope and the glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Is he God? And we can go back to Isaiah 9.6 For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulders. And his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. 
is Jesus God? Is, is there any scripture that proves that? Too many. Well, I just gave you. Everywhere. But there's even more. I, I can keep going. So I said, and I'm going to keep going a little bit longer. <laughs> I says, well, we hope you can't keep going too much longer. 1 Timothy 3.16 says, great is, thy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifested in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen by the angels, preached among the Gentiles, believed on in the world, received up into glory. Can you, can, does that describe what happened to Jesus? Think about it. Great is the mystery of godliness. You, you can't figure everything out about God. How are you going to know anything about God? Get you a Bible and go to reading it. You can look out and say, oh, there must be something bigger than me. Where did all this come from? That's not enough to get you into heaven. You need to read the Bible. Great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifested in the flesh. Did he come down and take on a body? So he was manifested in the flesh, right? That's what it says right there justified in the spirit huh? and not only was he he's the just justifier Amen. so is that is a bunch of double talk no he was just and that's why he can justify you that's if right. he wasn't just he can't justify you is there any real or true justice in this world yes, sir. well somebody says I want justice well if they got justice they'd be in hell Except Jesus came along and made a way for them to go to heaven justly. <coughs> he was the just justifier. Does that, do you, does that make sense to you? I kind of like that myself. He's my just justifier. Some judges aren't very just. Some of them are crooks. Dr. McGee says, how can a guy that drinks alcohol and gets drunk be up there and judge somebody for getting drunk in a car and hitting somebody and killing somebody. But they do it. But Jesus never ever sinned, so he could judge you for anything and everything. That's right. Most of all, I think he'll judge you for rejecting him and his judgment. His judgment is final. He used to talk about it. I think it was Chrysler had a car called a judge. It had a big engine in it. Out right there on about most cars, said, "Here comes the judge. Is the judge coming? Mm -hmm. I think he's got a little power. <clears throat> Justified in the spirit, seen by angels. You know, uh, angels came down and ministered to Jesus. Angels come down and announced his birth. That's right. Angels come down and ministered to him after he was tempted in Matthew chapter four, and nursed him back." And angels, I think, were there and the demons in the Garden of Gethsemane when he was praying and there was a strong battle going on between him, between the demons and the true angels, the good angels. If you want to read about that, read about it. Go to Luke and find where it talks about him. And the sweat's coming down like big drops of blood. And it says he's in an agony. You know, sometimes for you to do right, it's a struggle. It's easy to do wrong. It comes natural. Yeah. But it's hard to do right sometimes, isn't it? We can just have that for free. He preached among the Gentiles, <laughs> believed on in the world. Did he preach to any Gentiles? Yeah. One woman at the well was a half Jew and Gentile. And I'm sure there are others if we go through study and <clears throat> Believed on in the world, received up into glory. Did he go back up? Amen. Not only did he go up, he said he's going to come back. X says he's going to come back like he went up. Was he a lunatic, a liar, or was he Lord of Lord and God of gods? Lord of Lord. Amen. Well, you, you need to make a decision on that. Have you made a decision on it? If you have, I'm sure you've asked him to save you and say so you'll go to heaven when you die. And uh, John 14, 6 says, uh, somebody help me get it started. That's first. 
Huh? I am the way. I am the way, the truth, the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. Amen. Can't go to heaven unless you go through Jesus. He's the door of a sheepfold. That's right. John chapter 10, if you want to find that. In Acts chapter 16, verse 31, remember Paul and Silas are in jail and the place gets shook up and the jailer's about to kill himself and he asks, says, what must I do to be saved? He said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved in thy house. And then, if I can find it, I have one more thing I want to do. I don't know if I wrote it down. I don't think I did. You know, uh, but I'll tell you about it. One time, uh, Jesus asked the disciples, said, who, do you, who, who do people say I am? And uh, Peter comes along and he says, uh, you're the Christ. You're basically what he said, you're the Savior. Amen. And uh, the Lord says back to him, says, uh, that God, that the uh, Holy Spirit gave you that. The Holy Spirit. I think for you to get saved, the Holy Spirit has to work in your heart. And make you come to realize the Bible is the truth. And that Jesus did die. And somebody says, what do I have to do to be saved? You need to realize you're a sinner. Be sorry for the sins. Pray and ask Jesus to forgive you and save you. And the Bible says, whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. I'm, I'm thinking and starting to work on a sermon about praying through. You know, for you to get saved, you don't have to pray through. Yeah. God's sitting there on the front porch waiting for you to come home. Let's grab his hand. Just like the prodigal sons, Father. Now all you got to do is come and, and whosoever shall call the name of the Lord shall be saved. saved. He that believeth on the Son hath life, but he that hath not, believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth on him. But if you just come and ask him to save by so that you'll save him. But you've got to believe it. It's got to be real to you. And so we, we that's what it takes to get saved. That's all it takes. Doesn't, yeah, doesn't necessarily you have to get baptized, join a church. You just have to trust Jesus and be sorry for your sins. So I did that. I was only 11, 10, 11 years old or so. About 1957. I've been saved ever since. Can you remember when you got saved? But I kept putting it off. Somebody said, well, you couldn't have put it off too long if you were only 10 or 11. But I put it off a while. But then I heard a preacher preach and he Talked about getting saved in prison and how God changed his life. And I went up and asked the, my Sunday school teacher took the Bible and took John 3.16, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believed in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. I prayed and I said, Lord, I'd like to have some of that everlasting life. But I don't want it in this body. <laughs> you can have that for free. I want that new body. This one's lasted uh, 76 years. It won't be long, it'll have be another year. I'll finish up another year. But you don't know how long you have. Today's the day of salvation. You can just bow your head and pray and ask the Lord to save you. Let's all stand. <coughs> Let's turn to page 375 in our handbook.